Welcome to JS Online Tuitions. Today in biology, we're going to be looking at the first topic, which is living organisms and non-living things. And we're going to start by looking at living organisms. So we can classify everything around us as living organisms or as non-living things. This classification is based on characteristics that all living organisms share. The characteristics of living organisms are called life processes. When an organism can carry out the seven life processes, we classify it as a living organism. Living organisms are made up of cells. A cell is a basic unit of life. Some organisms consist of one cell. We call these unicellular organisms. The single cell of an organism has everything it needs to carry out all the life processes. Examples of unicellular organisms include bacteria and amoebas. Other organisms consist of more than one cell. These are multicellular organisms. The cells do not all have the same function. They only carry specific functions. We say they are specialized. A multicellular organism can consist of millions of cells. Together these cells carry out all the life processes. Let us now look at the characteristics of living organisms. All living organisms share seven characteristics. When an organism can carry out all seven life processes, we classify it as a living organism. So let us look at these seven life processes. So the first one we have feeding. All living organisms need to take substances from their environment to obtain energy to grow and stay healthy. Plants use light, air, and water to make their own food through a process called photosynthesis. Animals cannot make their own food. They eat plants or other animals. Number two, we have respiration. All living organisms exchange gases with their environment. Respiration is one of the ways that a cell gains energy to fuel cell activities. Number three, we have reproduction. Reproduction is the process of producing organisms of the same kind as the parent. All living organisms produce young. Humans give birth to babies and beds lay eggs that hatch chicks. Plants also produce. Plants make seeds that can grow into new plants. New plants can also grow from a part of the parent plant like the root, stem or leaf. Living organisms need to produce to enable the survival of their kind. Number four, we have growing. All living organisms grow. Growth may be an increase in size or mass. It can also be a change of shape or development of a different structure. For example, a flower on a plant. Growth is the result of an increase in the number and size of cells. Number five, we have locomotion. Locomotion means movement. All living organisms move. Animals move with lips like legs and wings. They move to find food, to avoid predators and to find a new mate. Plants do not move fast like animals because their roots keep them in one place. But plants do move. Their stems and leaves grow and turn slowly towards light. Their roots grow and turn slowly towards water. Number six, we have sensitivity. Sensitivity is the process of detecting changes inside and outside the body and responding to these changes. All living organisms can sense changes in their environment. They then react to these changes. Animals have sense organs like eyes, ears, noses, tongues, and skin. Animals use these organs to be aware of what is happening around them. When an animal smells or sees food, it can move towards it. An animal can also smell and hear enemies. Number seven, we have excretion. Excretion is the process of eliminating or expelling waste materials. All living organisms remove waste products from their bodies. These products form during life processes. For example, the carbon dioxide that you breathe out is a waste product from breathing. When you urinate, you get rid of waste products from feeding. Then let us look at the summary of characteristics of living organisms. So we have characteristics of living organisms and we have description. So the first one we are feeding. 
So feeding is the process of obtaining substances from the environment for energy growth and to stay healthy. Then we have respiration, process of exchanging gases with the environment such as breathing in air with oxygen and breathing out air with carbon dioxide. Then we have reproduction, process of making new organisms of the same kind. Then we have growing, process of increasing in size and mass. Then we have locomotion, process of moving. Then we have sensitivity, process of detecting changes in the environment and responding to them. Then we have excretion, process of eliminating waste products. Then let us look at distinguish between living organisms and non-living things. So on how you, you can distinguish between living organisms and non-living things. It can be easy to distinguish between living organisms and non-living things if one knows the seven life processes carried out by living organisms. These seven life processes include feeding, respiration, reproduction, growing, locomotion, sensitivity, and excretion. If an organism possesses the seven life processes, it is classified as a living organism. If an organism does not possess all the seven life processes, it is classified as a non-living thing. Then let us look at the life processes of living organisms. The seven characteristics of living organisms are performed in the body of an organism. In multicellular organism, systems such as the digestive system perform specific functions. Different chemical reactions take place in a system. In the digestive system, for example, food is broken down or digested to release nutrients to the body. The food is converted into more simple chemical compounds that the body can use. This chemical reaction, as well as many others, take place all the time in the cells of living organisms. The chemical processes that occur within a living organism in order to obtain life is called metabolism. The chemical reactions are called metabolic reactions. Let us now look at metabolic reactions and enzymes. A metabolic reaction is a chemical reaction controlled by chemical substances called enzymes. Enzymes are proteins made in the body. They function as catalyst. A catalyst speeds up a reaction but does not take part in it. In other words, a catalyst functions like a key in a lock. The key can lock or unlock the lock but the key does not become part of the lock. This means that a catalyst can be used over and over again. Then enzymes control the processes that take place in an organism because they only allow specific reactions to take place. Enzymes work best under specific conditions. For example, a specific temperature and specific acidity or alkalinity. Then let us look at catabolic and anabolic reactions. So metabolic reactions consist of two types of reactions called catabolic and anabolic reactions. So we're going to start by looking at catabolic reaction. This is the breaking down of large molecules. This type of reaction releases energy. For example, when you eat food that contains glucose, a catabolic reaction breaks down the sugar into carbon dioxide and water. This releases energy that you can use to do things like work and taking part in sport. Then let us look at anabolic reaction. This is the building up of large molecules from small molecules. This type of reaction needs energy to take place. For example, your liver forms a large molecule called glycogen from small glucose molecules. So that's all about living organisms and non-living things. Where you have questions, please ask in the group. Thank you.